cars and coffee a good combination and a lot of similarities and like coffee it's pretty easy to mess up but let's take this for example this is a flat white steam milk a shot of espresso pretty simple formula now the car we've got today has also got origin like you would get from your coffee born on the racetrack built for the consumer and uh, i think i hear it coming So we've got our resident new supercar expert with us, uh, Jonathan Hugo, and he's going to run us through this amazing car that he's bought for us to review and exactly why it is. Jonathan, thanks for joining us, man. And why this car? Don't why Why the M430? Thanks, <laughs> thanks a lot, first of all, for, for, for having me. And thank you for calling me an expert. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, well, look, this car in particular, I've, I've chosen just from a personal point of view. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I feel it's an enthusiast car. You and I have had this discussion how many times mm. that these cars are emotional bikes. Yeah. You know, nobody needs a, you know, a, even a one and a half million rand car. But you nobody, buy with your heart. You buy with your heart, yeah. exactly. You know, you buy it because you want it. Yeah. So, so this car for me, I feel has still got a lot of that passion. It's mm. not for posers. The guys that buy it, buy it because they really, really want it. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's Aston Martin's, uh, derivative uh well road going uh, race car so mm -hmm. aston martin actually raced the vantage in the uh, gtc gte and gt3 category yeah. very successful car it actually drills a lot of the porsches a lot of the mclarens i, I can tell you now guys in mclaren are pulling out their hairs with you know with a car that's this old but it's still beating them <laughs> it's still there um, it's, yeah, still up. It's, it's, it's still challenging it's still there. yeah exactly so 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 for me i i like i really just wanted to bring through something again for you and I especially and I mean there's lots of other people also that love uh, you know that are really enthusiasts so I just wanted to bring something through that we could actually uh, enjoy again and the N430 this Aston it's got the little N badge in the front I know that's worrying to some people and some motoring enthusiasts and um, reviewers have said that that spoils a car do you think it spoiled this car at all no 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 not at all I mean the whole point of, of having an N on a Vantage is is for the Nurburgring, right? Uh, and as mentioned before, you know, I mean Aston Martin raced the car, and people tend to forget that. And 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 Aston's really, really, as mentioned again, successful in racing. So Nurburgring in particular is one of those tracks where Aston's performed on numerous of times. So mm. uh, you know, before they've launched the N400, then they launched the N420, and now finally they got the N430. Right. So definitely not, you know, it's definitely not spoiled the car. If anything, it's 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 added to that whole badass and uniqueness of the car. And this one's got the race derived 4.7 liter V8. So that's basically a detuned version of the one that actually won its class a couple of years ago. Yeah, uh, so you're 110 percent right. So it's a it's it's the whole car in general is pretty much a, a detuned race car from the suspension, uh, like you said, the engine. It uses even the sequential gearbox, exactly the same one that they use on the race cars. So, uh, so there's no let up. You just bang it through the gears and off you go. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, I mean, all the race cars, uh, you know, whether it's Porsche, McLaren, Ferrari, they all use exactly the same uh, gearbox. The only difference is Aston Martin has decided to to make this gearbox available to the public to actually enjoy and actually drive. So proper races, race car for the road, pretty much. That's it. Yeah, exactly. It's it's for, for real race enthusiasts, it's for a driver, it's not for posers. Start off with the Aston Martin badge. This for me is very special, it's unique to all the Astons. Uh, the badge is hand painted and hand polished, it comes from a jewelry manufacturer, it's then uh, hand fitted. This is something really unique and special, I mean that for me already sets it already apart from so many other sports cars. On the uh, N430, you'll notice we've got the white lipstick, we've got the white uh, a pillars and the white side mirrors those over there are what we call club sport graphics so all the n series cars did have the option of putting on the club sport graphics however each one of the club sport graphics were unique to a specific color so for instance if you chose the allura green color you had matching yellow club sport graphics if you chose the speedway color which is white you got the matching red graphics so no matter what color you chose you had specific graphics which went with it just to try and keep in line with a little bit of that racing heritage and to keep that that enthusiastic and sports uh, sports feeling still going with it you'll notice the grill is black very different you also do get a get a, get a chrome option on the normal on the normal vantages we've got beefed up beefed up suspension handle the extra horsepower beefed up brakes to handle the extra uh, power also you can only go as fast as what you can stop 
You'll notice the discs are also steel, they're not the normal carbon ceramics which are normally perceived as the better brakes. Uh, the, the, the reality is all race cars actually come out standard with uh, steel brakes. You'll notice the GT3, GTC, GTE categories, the guys all actually use steel brakes. So whether it's Ferrari racing or McLaren, they all use those brakes. Come through with me over here. Aston employs a one-third rule on the design of all their cars, that's why their cars are always so sleek looking. So this design from the from the window, the size is one-third down to the ground. Same thing with the grill. Other really cool part is the handle is like a handshake, so it welcomes you into the car. The door also opens up at an angle. It's what Aston Martin calls swan doors. And this, when you open it up, raises it away from the curb so you don't have to worry about clipping any curbs when you open up the the door when you're parking in the city coming around through to the back we've got a sports exhaust n 430s are finished off with a dark exhaust finish give it a lot more menacing look we've obviously got our n badge to show that it's the n430 the n series car in in line with Aston's clean and sleek designs, you'll notice they don't have any ugly buttons to open up the boot. We've got a very neat finish over there. Press that. Bob's your uncle. This is the 4.7 uh, race derived engine from Aston Martin that's been dumped inside this car to give you as much fun as you possibly can have in any other V8. Um, it's got 430 horsepower obviously from the N430. 0 to 100 is 4.8 seconds. Might not sound like a lot but again you must remember from a race car's point of view you're not really at the 0 to 100 time much are you. You're actually mainly at the 120 to 180 mark so that's really where this car performs. But uh, enough about that. Uh, let's join Leon on the inside of the car. This is it, the interior of the N430 and what an amazing place to be. And just right off the bat, I must say, a lot of manufacturers, when they do make road going cars from race derived derivatives, they don't really carry a lot of that special feeling into it. Now, I know you get your Porsche GT3s and all those kind of cars, but this is essentially a race car for the road, but with a Grand Tourer kind of idea in mind. And Aston went all out. So I'm going to run you through a few features that I find personally impressive. First thing is when you get into a car, you grip the steering wheel. Now with this, they finished it off in a bit of Alcantara. Now, although you're not going to run onto the track with this car for every single meet, but there might be times when you want to give it a go. Um, hands are going to get a little bit sweaty, I can promise you that. So the Alcantara provides perfect grip in any condition. This goes, goes through to the entire interior, and obviously where the Alcantara meets the leather and obviously meets the carbon fiber that comes off from its racing history. Seats are super comfortable, also trimmed half Alcantara, half leather, and they have a much more of a bucket feel than your normal Astons do, making sure that that racing pedigree is right there. On the sides of the door cards, they've made the whole door card piece that you grab, or your grab handle is made out of aluminium, but the handle that you pull to close the door is steel. Why do they do that? Aston's all about feel, about look, about soul in what they build and they've carried that through. A very nice interior piece that I like is called the Crystal Key. Now the Crystal Key is part of Aston's philosophy in terms of feeling and getting the emotion out of your car and that's exactly what they've done with this amazing little piece. Small, small touches makes all the difference. We've got obviously not the manual version but anything you need to control on the car runs right over here from your sport, reverse, neutral and drive modes. Obviously you've got your basic layout when it comes to your audio visual equipment and then the very famous Aston Martin dash. Now what makes this so much different to the others? Well, it's exactly that, Aston Martin. The revs run anti-clockwise and the speedo runs clockwise. Now that might seem uh, it's going to throw you a little bit off and it is something to get used to in the beginning but trust me once you've done it, you're never going to want to go back anywhere else. And being in the passenger seat just a few seconds ago really, is <laughs> it's a completely different feeling to actually being behind the wheel of this thing. It's so much more engaging, right? It's so much more engaging. What, yeah, I, love, exactly. what I love about this car, oh, I love that, I'm sorry. And the gear changes, you can actually feel it snapping into gears. Amazing feeling. What I feel nice, the most amazing part for me about the chassis is I can actually feel what the car is doing. Well, that's you can the feel the dancing on the road. I can I can feel the feedback, and I know with this car they've kept it simple: hydraulic steering, no electronic aids. It's absolutely what it must be, and that is a driver's car. And I know we keep ranting on about this 
throughout the entire video that yes driver's car driver's car driver's car but you need to do yourself a favor you need to get into one of these if you're interested in an aston and first put this your first base if you're a driver's guy and you're looking for this kind of car you want the james bond coolness then this is something you need to look at without a doubt you're gonna get fun from beginning to end i mean i've just been cruising around a couple of weeks ago in cars that are literally race cars for the road they've got absolutely zero aircon zero radio and, and it's built for a purpose you know it's there for a reason but the difference is this is a race car with all the luxury features it's got everything you need you want to do a gt cruise from here to Joburg or wherever you want to go it'll do that and more Gear changes are nice and positive. In fact, it feels like there's a mechanical arm clawing on something and actually putting the car yeah. into gear. Yeah. That's the strangest feeling out of it all. I can't believe that. I'm not sure if you guys can hear the sound of the engine, but this is pretty much the the whole thing about it. It just the N430 just completely involves you in the entire drive experience. The suspension slightly harder than than a normal car. Uh, the suspension slightly harder than a lot of people always say. Well, you know, I was looking at an F-Type. It is harder than that, but it is a lot more engaging drive from the sound, from the feeling, even the steering is heavier. And that's just purely so you can get so much more feedback when you're going around corners, uh, the vibration from the road, you get you get instant feedback, which you as the driver, um, well, you know, you obviously are able now to make better choices and decisions with your next move. So I'm going to give it a little bit of gas, hopefully you guys will hear it. of the Vantage is just, it's, it's second to that. I mean, I know guys in Europe that race, that race uh, McLarens, that race Porsches, they race, they race the entire range. And I know guys that have raced with McLarens uh, the year before last, and now they've switched over onto, onto the Aston range. And I mean, they, um, they can't stop raving about how stable and perfect the chassis is. In something like wet conditions, that's, that's really where you notice how good the different chassis are. And that's something like where the Vantage now, for instance, always does well, no matter the conditions. And that's why I always stress to guys, you know, if, you, if you're gonna buy a Vantage, it, it's an enthusiast car. Otherwise, all, how incredible the car is completely, you know, goes to waste. Yeah. yeah, it goes to waste, you know, it, it falls on deaf ears. You know, I can tell you how amazing the chassis is but you're not gonna you're not gonna appreciate it until you actually drive it and, 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 and you actually notice it so we've been clamoring around this car now and one thing I did forget to mention and I think that's the big thing when it comes to these types of sports cars is seating position and comfort because at the end of the day you want to spend time in the car you want to have fun in the car and that's something that I think and I mean it's I think it's a given it's a given it's an Aston Martin it's quality well thought out and it's comfortable and um, there I sound a little bit cliche I do feel a little bit like James Bond driving in this car <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know why I mentioned that but yeah I just had to I'm sorry I'm sorry I had to do that thanks for joining us on this amazing drive thanks to Jonathan Hugo for organizing this great car for us to test please go to our Facebook page facebook.com forward slash 53ctor or our website 53ctr.com and make sure you go check out their website daytonagroup.co.za they've got some amazing cars and we've got more cars coming on test see you guys soon